Right, so hello. So, as you can probably tell from the title, uh, today I'm going to talk about books that made me cry. I think it's very appropriate since today is Valentine's Day. So yeah, a little background about me and my reading and what kind of reader I am. It's quite hard to make me cry when I'm reading a book. It is very easy to make me cry in real life, <laughs> but for a book to make me cry I have to really believe the characters and really have some kind of emotional attachment to either the characters or the story and that doesn't happen very often so i have only five books and one honorable mention there were, might be some other books that made me kind of like misty eyed like my eyes eyes water a little bit uh, and they made me emotional but here i'm talking only about books that like genuinely there were tears <laughs> streaming down my face so very quickly the honorable mention is a book that i feel like <laughs> for a channel that's called anya's belger i do not mentioned this book often enough and that is uh, The Belladar by Sylvia Plath. So I read this book quite a long time ago. I read it when I was just kind of getting back into re reading. So that was like 2016. Back then I did not know that booktube existed. I did not know about Goodreads. So this is an honorable mention because it is an important book to me. I do think it made me emotional but I don't quite remember if it made me cry. I do. <laughs> I think it did but I'm not 100% sure. So The Belladar is about Esther, who is this young woman who went to New York for an internship in some kind of woman's magazine. And it seems like she should be happier than she is there, because it's like a dream come true thing. And she does not feel very happy. And this book is kind of famously about, you know, some mental issues and later about this woman spending time in a mental hospital. And also very famously, this book is semi-autobiographical, so a lot of the things from this book are based on Sylvia Plath's life, and I think that's what makes it even harder to read. There is one scene, and it's weird to call it a scene because this genuinely happened in Sylvia Plath's life. If you don't want any spoilers about this book. I do think it's ha it happens kind of halfway through this book. Skip to this time. Uh, there's a scene where the main character Esther kind of crawls under her house and takes a bunch of sleeping pills and you know attempts to end her life. And that scene just is engraved in my mind because she doesn't just take sleeping pills. She she literally like crawls under her house and like hides there to not be found and yeah it's uh it's hard to read that and it's even harder to read that knowing how Sylvia Plath's life ended so this is my honorable mention then we have a classic and that's Villette by Charlotte Bronte and I have a very weird relationship with this book because I hated the first half and I love the second half and this never happened to me so I ended up giving it four stars but I was so close to the end I think it and if you ever started this book and did not enjoy the beginning and or DNF'd it or if you're reading it and you feel like oh I kind of want to DNF it please please pull through and get at least halfway through this book because it definitely gets better and my problem was, this novel actually is also kind of semi-autobiographical. It's about this young woman who goes to Brussels to teach at a school. And I have to say, throughout the first half I felt like I didn't know the main character. The book starts and we're kind of thrown into this story without knowing anything about the main character. And I felt so distanced from the main character. And also there's like so much French in this book and you have to kind of flip back and forth between like the text, the dialogue and you have to flip to the back to read the translation and that was so annoying. But I have to say, at some point in the middle there are some like dramatic things happening and I suddenly realized that I really cared about the main character and didn't want anything bad happening to her and that was like really surprising to me because I was like, I thought I wasn't enjoying this book. So this kind of realization came to me very suddenly and from the second that I felt that I started really loving this story. So really give this book a fair chance. This book also explores, I think, depression and that's very interesting because it was written in like in the 1800s. And the reason why I cried is because of the ending. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the Charlotte Bronte just traumatized me with this book. I Wow, I genuinely had to deliberately pick only like very happy books because this book 
gave me depression like then we have a book that's not going to be surprised i don't think and that is a little lie by hanya yanikara this book is about four friends who kind of met for college and then I think moved to New York City to you know achieve their dreams and this book is just full of misery <laughs> it's about four friends but there's one character that we focus on the most and the critique about this book is that a lot of people say this is like torture porn because there are so many bad things happening to this one one character and I have to say I personally disagree because I'm not going to spoil anything but if in your childhood there's something very traumatic happening if you experience some kind of abuse I think first of all it's very hard to get out of this spiral of abuse and that abuse and the, those kind of traumatic events can you know most likely will affect your mental health and you know you can struggle with that the rest of your life so I don't think it's impossible so I don't think like there's too much of bad things happening to the main the, to the character it's just life I, I genuinely think this could happen to a person sadly and I cried so many times <laughs> reading this book like you have no idea this is the most I have ever cried reading a book and I remember I started it like physically reading physically this book in Poland and then I went to I went on a trip to Edinburgh and I had an ebook on my phone because I wanted to continue reading this book and I was staying in this like it wasn't even a hotel it was like a hostel so there was like I don't know six other people in the room that I was sleeping in and <laughs> there were like bank beds and I was in the kind of the lower one and I was reading this book like during the night and just like hyperventilating and trying to be like as quiet as possible <laughs> because I didn't want anyone to hear that I was just like crying in the middle of the night but I was reading a book I was not having a mental breakdown but yeah that happened so a little life so this is also another book that I don't think I would like to reread like ever because it's just so traumatizing <laughs> then we have something that will not surprise you either uh, this is the house of mirth by Edith Wharton this was the book that my favorite book of 2020 and here's the thing this book is a five star but I actually did not love the ending and I actually don't think that a perfect book exists so even my five stars tend to have things that I wasn't like 100% satisfied with and with this book it's the ending there is a chapter like not the last chapter but the, the chapter before that or even the one before that that just made me also like hyperventilate and like just like put my <laughs> hands around my mouth to like stop my sobs yeah uh, yeah it's sad so there isn't much happening in this book and it's not very dramatic but it is depressing <laughs> so there's that and the last thing i would like to talk about is actually a collection of poetry and it is the statue by Wisława Szymborska the title translates to enough and i've mentioned Wisława Szymborska quite a few times on my channel she won a Nobel prize uh, for poetry yeah if you've never read Wisława Szymborska you should really give her a shot i thought so like in my head I was like, okay, she won the Nobel Prize, so this is going to be kind of a very like, highbrow poetry and that I will struggle to understand. Not at all. This is so simple. Like, I don't want to say it's simple because it's, uh, I feel like it will have like bad connotations, but it's so accessible and easy to understand. And I have to say, she can be sentimental and I don't like overly sentimental things, but I think she undercuts her poetry with humor or, or self-awareness and because of that it doesn't make it cliche in my opinion. I've read some other collections of poetry by her and all of them I gave four stars and I really enjoyed them. This is the only one I gave five stars to because not actually because of the poems, even though there was one that made me cry. It was about a cat whose owner died and he was like alone waiting for oh no I'm going to cry. Like you can't write a poem about a sad animal and not expect me to just bawl my eyes out oh, okay so that poem made me cry okay let's settle down but what made me cry the most is the editor's note actually because this is this is the last collection of poetry that Wisława Szymborska brought and you know the title enough is very telling I think and she died before finishing this book but she kind of she made a deal with the publisher that she's going to publish this book and she told them 
the title was going to be enough, so she kind of knew it would be her last collection of poetry. And at the end, oh no. So you have the poems, like just like regular poems here, and at the end you have kind of scans, like photos of poems kind of written by her in her notebooks and stuff like that that they think she was writing for this collection. So they included those two. I know it's going to sound silly, but like I knew she, she died quite a few years ago, but when I was reading the editor's note I kind of felt like I suddenly <laughs> lost a friend, because poetry is so personal. So, by reading someone's poetry, I think you can really get to know them as a person. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I'm glad this is the last book that I talked about in this video, because this is a mess. Okay. <laughs> I hope my crying at least um, convinced you to read some Wisława Czemperska's poetry. Because she won a Nobel Prize, her poetry is translated into like a lot of different languages, so I do think yeah, it's it's pretty easily accessible, even though she's a Polish author. So that's everything. This was embarrassing. I hope you enjoyed this video. As weird as saying that is. <laughs> See you next video. Bye.